The Beach Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith. Good evening everybody and welcome to today's program. Now, tonight's one is a very serious one because as we know, depression if left untreated, if left to, to its own devices, it can actually tragically lead to suicide. So we're going to be covering today eight reasons why you should not kill yourself. As we've heard from previous stories on this program, uh, sometimes a person really does think that that's it, there's no other way, there's no other hope. And it's like they're in this almost trance-like state and everything is actually screaming at them that suicide is the right thing to do. But as we know, this is not the right thing to do. That's why we have this program. This is why every week we are here for you. We are showing you through real life stories that there is a solution to your problem. So I actually have some figures now from the Samaritans. And actually, I didn't know this, but the Samaritans are the only uh, charitable organization that actually keeps statistics for suicide. That's something new that I learned. And these are figures from uh, last year because it actually takes like about a year for them to gather information and for, for stuff to come through. But it said that in 2020, 4,912 people died by suicide. That's shocking, isn't it? I mean, even one person is bad enough, but 4,912 people and males aged 45 to 49 continue to have the highest suicide rate. Now, my real life story today actually is a male. <laughs> I know we've had females on the last few weeks and maybe he can um, shine some light on why it is that maybe the, the male suicide rate is higher. I think it's because men tend to keep things in more than women, but let's see what he has to say later on as well. So if you have any comments about this topic, you can email us on beatdepressionuk at uckg.org. You can also type in the chat below. If you know anyone that has been suicidal in the past and or they're going through a hard time, please, we're going to give you some time during this song to share this program, let people know that we're on, let them, let them know that we're going to be giving eight reasons why you should choose life, right, as we're still here, choose life rather than death. We're going to be giving these reasons and inspiring you. So invite people to join. If you're not following our social media yet, it's also Beat Depression UK on Instagram and Facebook. We post lots of inspiring content there as well. So see you right after this. The Beat Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith. So eight reasons to choose life, eight reasons not to kill yourself. That's what we're going to be covering on today's program. And my special guest today, Shad, was actually one day at a bridge about to jump. Thank God something stopped him. He's going to be telling us what that was. And also the build up to what actually led him to be on that bridge that night, ready to jump. Shad, welcome to the show. Hi, Miss Chris. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. What's with this miss? My Sorry. My name's Chris. Sorry. Right, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. You're, you're good today? I'm very good. But you but weren't? Not no. so long ago? Not so, yeah. Not, not so. It seems that, actually, it's, to be honest, it seems like a whole world, a whole lifetime ago, if I can even put it like that. Um, but yeah, it, before I was checking some of the statistics and stuff. And yeah, what did you think about that, by the way? Because 4,912 people died by suicide in 2020. The, Shocking. It is. And the thing that I think sometimes what can happen is we see the numbers, what, but we fail to relate that to to something more meaningful. Because you think 4,000 people, you, you don't really know how much that is. But if you went to a venue with 1,000 people and mm. you just imagine those 1,000 times by four dying yeah. taking and not just dying of natural deaths mm -hmm. but taking their own life i think that's when it starts to have a bit more meaning that these are all individuals who had families these are yeah, all individuals exactly. that had a world of stories um you know they, they've had their own experiences built relationships these are all individuals people real people who have taken their lives and it, it's a horrible thing why do you think more males have, have the highest suicide rate males in general I think men tend to have 
I know, of course, this is more of my opinion, mm -hmm. but I think men tend to have less emotional maturity and capacity than women. For example, we don't speak about, ge generally speaking, and although this is slowly starting to change, we don't tend to speak about feelings. Or you yeah. know that whole, uh, how can I say, toxic masculine kind of mentality and stuff. Um, so Meaning I think you should just keep still. You shouldn't speak about it. You should just yeah. The stiff strong, upper lip. The stiff strong, upper lip. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I understand that there, there. I believe sometimes what happens is is that these mentalities are born and bred and sometimes misunderstood. Because it is important to have moments where you know you kind of tell yourself I can do this, but you should also be speaking about whatever you're going through, especially if you can't handle it. And there's nothing mm. wrong with asking for help. Help, Actually, we've yeah. got Robert in the house too. Hey, how <laughs> Hello, are you Robert. Guys? He's just right. he's just behind the scenes. This is my is his mic on. Yes. Can we get well, a camera on him? Yeah. Can we get a camera on me? All right. Good. Mo uh, how are we doing, guys? Yeah, I'm enjoying the conversation. <laughs> I'm enjoying I him it. Off guard then. He wasn't concentrating. <laughs> can we see him? No. Oh, don't. Oh, we can't see him. No, no Robert, worries. Come here a minute. Please, okay. If you don't sure. mind. Yeah. Okay. Just I just want to just get a quick another uh, male opinion. Okay. You All right. Let's bring. Okay. Yeah. Let's bring him here. Robert, okay, do men talk about their feelings? Do you guys, men Come speak about their more. feelings? Come this way. Okay, let me come this way. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You All right, we're good. Right. We're good. There we go. Yes. Do men speak about their feelings? No. Why? Um, I, I, would, I would say, okay, there is a culture thing, but I think it's also kind of hardwired into men in general. Mm -hmm. All right, these are my thoughts. All right. Um, I mean, coming from my background, you know, I was taught to be strong. If you go to someone hits you at school, hit them back. You know, you don't speak about your feelings or anything like that. Growing up as a man, um, you you just kind of, I don't know, you have, to, you have to be strong, you know. And expressing, like, emotions is like, where does that even come from? Where do we even have time for that? We're too busy doing something, mm -hmm. building something, creating something. We have things to do. And we neglect our emotional intelligence we neglect our emotional side that seems to be something reserved mainly for females to do you know and i'm hoping things are changing because as we know as we see from the statistics is the, the males that are more likely to yep. end their lives by suicide but it's like why does it have to get to that point where men actually think you know what it's better to kill myself rather than actually speak about what i'm going through it that's that's the sad reality isn't it because there's still this kind of don't talk it's better to die than to actually talk basically is what what we're seeing mm -hmm. i think that one one thing that i find quite interesting as well is that and i don't know how this varies between the genders but i believe it's something that from what i've experienced more common with men but when men tend to take their own lives it seems to be more sudden is something that tends to be uh, I'm not saying that you know it's exclusive exclusively for men but it seems to be something where people don't realize that men men are hiding it so well that it always comes as a shock it's mm -hmm. something that people don't expect it's always something that but it's you, you know what I mean is it is as Robert said men just hide it so well that they just get it done mm -hmm. and just to add to that I mean the whole concept of um, about mental health you know, this subject is something that is still quite new. It's become matured now, but it's mainly been for the past, I would say, six years. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking off the top of my head that mental health was an actual issue. Now, nowadays, we know that we need to take care of our mental health and emotions are part of that. Right. And so if men, we're coming from a background where men being breadwinners, you know, obviously things have changed nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. But initially we're breadwinners. It's like, okay, I've got to carry the family on my shoulders. I need to appear strong. I need to appear be, to be doing something. If I'm not doing something, if I'm not producing... I'm a failure. I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. You know, if my family's going through hardship, I'm a failure. So, and you can't show it. You're not going to go to the pub, right? Or some other social gathering, okay? Um, and spill all that as a man. You know, you're going to speak very superficially that, oh, it's not easy. Mm. But they would generally keep it inside. Actually, that's a good point for us ladies. If you hear a man saying, oh, things aren't easy. I think that's already like 
Well, took a lot to say for, for yeah, th- yeah that that oh, means right. more yeah. than that, there's yes. a lot he's more <laughs> there's a lot more under that he's already so things aren't easy he's seeping out yeah, yeah. He can't yeah. he's already more. finished like that yeah. he's already on edge for for a guy to come out and say something like that yeah. yeah so that's already a sign ladies and gentlemen that you know you're doing okay that okay which camera could this one um that you need to kind of check what's going on there and see if the person wants to talk take them aside um you know, speak to them, say, look, is there anything you want to chat about? Especially if it's your son, someone that you know well. Mm-hmm. When someone, sa- when a male says things aren't easy, there's probably a lot more going on there. But anyway, let's get now to Shad's story, because I believe we're going to be carrying this topic on a little bit more. Sh- Robert, you can stay with us to give sure. us your comments as well. Yeah, sure. So tell us what led up to that night you on a bridge about to jump. So i think a lot of it you know I, as with anything in life it was quite dynamic in the sense of there was quite a few things going on i grew up with very physically abused parents um one of the examples i always give to give people a picture of what it was like my mom once she stripped me naked put duct tape over my mouth tied my hands and feet with rope and then you know vix oh, she, she would put the vix in my eyes wow mm-hmm. and so you can imagine growing up as a child like that a lot mm. of things are broken I, I was a kid you know what i mean I, I was just broken inside mentally speaking emotionally in every sense of the word i lacked self-confidence i'll go to school i'll get bullied and then i come home and my parents will beat me and there wasn't just a normal beating this was like proper you know wow. what i mean like you're on the yeah. floor you can't move my parents you know it, and of course they, they they had no idea how to take care of kids they were going through their own issues themselves and so they took that out on me and so, so just to inter- interrupt, mm. um, was you an only child? No, I have a little sister. And so it was just the two of you at the time? Yes. Did she go through what you went through? She did, but not to that extent. Okay. So she, she, she already felt like singled out in terms of not just the yeah. abuse, but also it seemed like it was worse for you than anyone yeah. else in the house. Because of course she was a young one and she, she tended to be a bit more on the balls. Like she, she was the one that was I, like, you know, what? she did things right. You know, mm. she did mm. things right. Um, whereas I was, you know, I don't know for what reason, but I was, I was a bit joking about or messing about with the time. And so that's how my parents kind of dealt with that. How did it affect you growing up? I think it made my social skills very lacking. So I, I struggled a lot with making friends in school. And then that whole, like dealing with the emotion side of things, I've never, like I had no level of self-awareness. I had no idea that something was going on inside of me or, you know, this idea that I'm not feeling happy. I had no idea of things like that. I just kind of went through every emotion, kind of went through everything. That's all you knew though, isn't it? Because it's like, because you grew up that way, you kind of thought, well, this is it. This is normality, really. Yeah. And you couldn't actually pinpoint that I'm sad or I'm depressed or something's wrong. I had no level of comparison. I, Mm. you know. Um, sorry to interrupt. You know, you're speaking about being bullied at school because mm. um, I, I think we've had a conversation before. Um, and you spoke you was overweight as a child as well. Yes, I was also overweight as a child. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, you know what I mean. Like you can picture what's going on. I used to get picked on by the the guys that would get bullied. I'll get bullied by them. Oh wow! If that helps. Yeah. So you know, and then you cr- kind of grow up with those kind of things, and you're already kind of looking at a very very bad path and then by 14 i started smoking um by 16 i was already drinking going out partying all of these things and i was trying to fit in so i kind of changed my persona if i could put it like that here's a question who introduced you to smoking uh a neighborhood friend of mine so you know it was just he said we kind of thought about it and then we bought a pack of cigarettes from the corner shop and then we would smoke half a day and from there, it started to become chain smoking. And then from there, weed. I started smoking weed while I was in secondary school. Started drinking while I was in secondary. Did it make you feel better? No. It, it that, like, <clears throat> it's more like you're not in the moment. So when I was high, you're not in the moment. It wasn't mm. that you're happy. It wasn't that you're like excited. You're just not in the state of mind frame. It's as if you're kind of in a bubble for that moment. And I understand that a lot of people find safety in that bubble. But then when I'm in that bubble and then I come out of that bubble, mm-hmm. I deal with the whole crash of back to, okay, I'm not happy again. And you actually started to self-harm as well, didn't you, yes. at one point? When did, how did that develop? So Why did you start doing that? I started self-harming when I was about 17 years old. I don't exactly remember why, but I remember how I felt, which was 
it felt like I was express when I when I saw the blood come out for me and it's a very personal experience so I know it's different for everyone but for me it felt more like my emotions were coming out so that pain mm-hmm. was coming out so I wanted to see the blood come out but I didn't want to tell anyone so I'd cut myself in my stomach I made made it a thing like I don't want I don't want the attention or anything so I'd cut myself in my stomach um, there was one time I even showed my dad and he was like look carry on and you know because I was like yeah what? yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, I showed my dad. I said, "Look, you know, the things that happened growing up. This, you know, this what's doing to me." And he said, "Okay, carry on." That's carry on. Yeah, that's what my dad said. So then, oh, yeah. yeah. How do you deal with that? Right, you're looking. Know. You're looking for some reaction. Yeah. For, of care. Yeah. And then, it, yeah, go. Ahead. Yeah, keep going. And then, 18, I became homeless, and then I moved into a hostel where majority of people were selling drugs, and. That was more like a hotbed of everyone that was depressed. Everyone there, you know what I mean. And I think it was it, it was kind of nice in the sense of you think there would be a lot of trouble, but there wasn't. Mm-hmm. Everyone knew that everyone had problems. Everybody knew that everyone was depressed, and I kind of made this like a a hot soup of mess. A, a community. Yeah, mm. but at the same time, it also meant that it was kind of it was one of those first moments of I wouldn't say peace, but some level of calmness. Mm-hmm. Like in that place, I felt like okay, I fit in. Yeah, because everyone's going through problems. Yeah. you're not the isolated one anymore. And yeah. I, sadly, actually, I think that sometimes that is what what happens. It's like you kind of. When I was depressed, for example, I used to be very jealous of other people, and I used to look at them and think, "Why doesn't anyone feel like I'm feeling? Why are you smiling and I feel like rubbish inside? Why why are you just getting on with things and you're laughing and you're partying and I feel feel like this?" So it was like I wanted someone to feel what I was feeling, not because I wanted to wish them evil or anything like that, but it was just, is, does anyone feel like I do? Is there anyone like me out there? And when you kind of find people in the same kind of boat, yeah, it, it does make you feel better, but it doesn't solve no, the issue by far at the no. same time. Uh, Shall tell us your worst, your worst point. So while I was living in the hostel, I couldn't sleep, you know, self, continuing self-harm, all of these things. And I tried all different things, nothing was working out. And so there was one night where um, I i don't know what it was, but it kind of just snapped in me. Like, I'm just going to do it. And then do what? I take my own life. Mm-hmm. That was it, literally. I said, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go, I'm going to do it. And it, it was a very strange moment because I wasn't feeling anything. It was more like I had made my decision, if that makes sense. So what I did was it was about one, two o'clock in the morning. I took the bus. I, I remember perfectly to this day. I took the bus, I sat on the top left of the bus, um, and I even remember there was a, like a family um, sitting on the right side of me. And I just remember thinking to myself, don't let them see what you're about to do. Like, they can't know what's about to happen because mm-hmm. they might try and stop you. I was so determined about what I was going to do. And then they got off the bus and I continued and I went all the way to Westminster Bridge. And then there was that moment where I went to the bridge and I looked over and I said, okay, and I, at that point... And, well, did you feel peace, I would say, at that moment in terms of, like, I'm doing the right thing? No. What were you feeling? I remember I was scared, and I remember looking at the water and thinking, like, it's pitch black, just thinking it looks poisonous. I remember that. And I remember thinking that... It's like a void of emotion. Like, I had lo- lost all sense of self, if I can put it like that. I... I had no more value. I had no more meaning. I had been, you know, when you're so emotionally worn out, they mm. don't have emotions anymore. E- emotionally numb. Yeah, like mm. I was just numbed out. It wasn't a sense of peace. Peace, you have, you know what I mean. You're content. You're happy. You have a level of self awareness. You, you, you're conscious. You're there. It's like you just kind of switched off. Yeah, like I mean, you know, yeah. you know, switched off. Yeah, you know like when you your just, emotions are kind of like yeah, yeah, okay. You know why I said that because I've read and i've heard from people like it's like the moment they're about to do something it's like this peace in inverted commas right because it's not obviously it's not real peace they feel this kind of relief if in a way because it's like okay finally i'm going to deal with this and it's like you said about the decision i've made a decision and i just went for it i wanted to just get it over and done with kind of thing so people kind of feel this kind of contentment this yes okay now i've made a decision i'm going to do it and it, it kind of makes them feel better. But then we've seen as well as the stories that I've read that um, in America as well, I've mentioned this on another program, that it's like people that have attempted suicide from bridges and jumped, they say the moment that their hands leave the, the rail, 
they regret what their decision because in that moment when you're about when a person's about to do something they do feel like okay this is good this is this is right but then it's, they regret it instantly they're the ones that came back and were able to tell the tale unfortunately look how many people have actually just just gone my goodness we're almost out of time we've only got five minutes for this show but let, let me we're going to talk about your transformation mm. um next week okay but let's, we're going to talk about a couple of the tips first because we did say we're going to give you eight reasons, but we did kind of get into other stuff, which was really interesting. <laughs> All right, but let, let's let's see a few reasons, and I'm going to discuss this with Shad and, and Robert as well. Mm -hmm. Eight reasons not to kill yourself. So the first one is suicide is final. Once it's done, there's no going back. So it's not like a decision that you can say, oh, let me just try this, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't work, I'll try something else. No, that's it. Once you've done it, you've done it, and that there's no going back, there's no control anymore. It's finished. And that alone, right, yeah. there should be a reason not to, to do it because there's no other option after that. I think people need to be aware as well of that. I think a lot of people made the decision because they feel like they've tried everything else. Yeah. But we kind of... I'm going to twist this a bit and might sound a bit odd, but we kind of like the person has to humble yourself and realize that, first of all, you haven't tried everything. Mm -hmm. This might be a bit direct, but you haven't. And the fact that I'm here, the fact that you're here, the fact that we have this program mm -hmm. is proof of the fact that there's something the person hasn't tried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's another option before they want to take the final solution. If exactly, I can put it like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Number two. Now, often people who feel suicidal today don't feel suicidal tomorrow so just because you feel something just because you have that feeling it doesn't mean that you should act on it because as we know robert feelings are fleeting they yep. come and go they're malleable you know, mm -hmm. situations in life constantly change, right? You can have a really bad day and you say I want to leave the earth, but guess what tomorrow you sleep, you wake up and it's like you're very optimistic, you're very positive. Exactly. So feelings you can't go by feelings because they change. They always change, right? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes for us ladies, for example, hormone, hormones, hormonal changes, that can make you feel up here one day, down here another day, but it doesn't mean that you should just never take action on the days when you feel low. That's, that's you know, my advice for that. But we can mm -hmm. go into more detail on that in another show. Mm -hmm. um, number three, if you feel suicidal it's because you're carrying more than you actually know how to handle but there is always a way out and the only way you're actually going to find this is if you're still alive yeah right so you're not going to feel better by killing yourself you're not going to feel you know you're not going to see this transformation and you know there is like shad said earlier there is a way out and you're not going to find that if you're dead. Yeah. Right? S suicide is a one-shot pony. Mm -hmm. I think we failed to use that term. Mm -hmm. It's just that direction. But however, when you're alive, op you have a world of options. Mm -hmm. You just haven't found it yet. Exactly. Now, some, uh, many times people that uh, want to take their lives are actually doing it because they want to feel better. Like, is, as we say, it's not because, you know, you want to kill yourself. It's not because you, you don't want to uh, live anymore is because you don't want to carry on living the life that you currently have all right so it's not that you want to die because i think all of us we have a natural instinct to survive right if you see people in hospitals normally they fight for their lives even animals they fight for survival all right so we we have this natural instinct to fight for survival mm -hmm. so it's not that you want to die because naturally inside of you there's this survival instinct but it's just that you don't want to carry on living the way you are living so number four is actually if you're looking to feel better this isn't going to come by killing yourself it's going to come by finding a solution mm. Agreed, Absolutely. gentlemen. That's it. That's what life's about, right? Finding solutions. That's the yeah. journey of life. Now, back to Shad. Yes. Shad. Now, things did turn around for you. They did. Uh, something amazing happened on that bridge, which we're going to tell people <laughs> next week. Yeah. You're going to have a cliffhanger, <laughs> right? Something amazing happened that stopped you. And this was really, I could only describe this as God's hand in this because yeah. just as you're about to jump, that very moment, yeah. amazingly, amazingly, something happened. Yes. And we're going to tell them next week what it yeah. was. And you are here today. You are happy. Absolutely. You are healthy. Yes. You are loving life. Yes. Yeah. More than loving life. Do you know what happened on that bridge? Don't say anything. No, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to hear this. 
Are you able to come back next week, Robert? Um, yeah, I'd love to be here next <laughs> it week. It depends what time, right? Because you yeah, might be busy. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what Probably happens. This time. But I would love to find out, yeah, the, the totality of this. This would be yeah. great. It's it's an amazing story, I have Honestly, to say. Honestly, to this day, is, if anyone, <laughs> yeah, if there's one moment that, yeah, I can't believe it. I still can't believe what happened. Even me, myself, I, I it happened to me. I still can't believe it happened. These things you hear about in movies, no. They really have. This, this wow. is honestly what what happened to you. Yeah. It's just, just the thought of you actually going through with what you were going to do, yeah. and how different things could have been. Yes. For you, for your family. Yes. It's just it's horrifying to think about. Really, really horrifying. Mm. But at the same time, it's like, oh my god, it's so like, so, thank God. Yeah. What happened? What happened? Happened. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could tell you today, but we so have run out of time. Oh, Shad, man. thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. We'll see me. you next week. And it, just final message for anyone that's feeling suicidal right now. I think um, I, as you, you, you saw the social media, contact us as soon as you can, without fail, without delay. I think more than anything, you know that we know what it's like. We're not mm -hmm. strangers. We are not people that have studied this. We are people that have experienced it. And more than probably anyone that you know, we know what it is like. Yeah. What's the helpline number, Shed? 0207 686 6000. Let's just wait for it to go up on the screen one more time. 0207 686 6000. Okay, so call us now. It's a 24 hour helpline. 24 hour helpline. We also have our email address, which is beatdepressionuk at uckg.org. If you want to join us on Fridays, Robert, we have five services here in Finsbury Park. What are the times? That's right. Uh, in Finsbury Park, we have services at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. Did you so, say 12? Yeah. And 12 o'clock in Finsbury Park. So, 12 p.m. Uh, yes. as well. We've got five. <laughs> so five <laughs> different yeah. meetings. So 7 a.m., 10 a.m., midday. 12, yeah. 3 p.m. and 7.30. Yeah. So you could just take a And these, these are the meetings, actually, that we all attended, yeah. right? When we were low, when we were down, when we were suicidal, or when we were suicidal, when everything was going wrong. And we, we got the tools to learn how to fight and how to overcome, didn't we? Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And so it's like this is a way to come out of the circle that you're in. Mm -hmm. Right, we talk about finding solutions. Come, you. This number is for you to come out of that circle and hear another new voice. Yeah. Two three two seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, and also if uh, we have lots of other branches UK wide, uh, if you want to go to uckg.org forward slash addresses. Sorry, you were going to say something, Shad, before we go. I was just going to say that the, what what you're going to find is not a temporary measure. Mm. You yes. there is genuine. Like there is a genuine day and night separation mm -hmm. from what you're going through now. There is a there is there is not. How can I say a temporary? Quick fix. Yeah, yeah, it's not a quick fix. It's not a temporary just thing. Just to make you feel a bit better. Yeah, for now, it's not. Right? You know, the, it's not a maintenance. You know, yeah. believe what we have to offer is not a maintenance, mm -hmm. and it's all for free. Brilliant. Definitely. Thank you, Shad. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. It's been Thanks, a pleasure. everyone, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs> From the moment you wake up, the thought of having to deal with the same problems all over again immediately makes you want to remain in bed. However, no problem, difficulty or discouragement goes away if you do nothing about it. When we are happy and have peace, the moment we wake up brings a smile to our faces and the strength to embrace the new day. Therefore. It is time to act against all the dark and heavy feelings in your life. Carry the mark of God in you and be protected so that by faith you may enjoy your life to the fullest. Bring a rose and join us in taking part in the Novena of the Rose with the Mark of the Cross. This Friday at 7.30pm at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N43NX or at any Universal Church near you.